Welcome to the AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr, and I'll be your host. Coming to you straight from AWS headquarters in Seattle, we bring you the latest and greatest cloud computing news, commentary, and technical information. We'll have guests from the teams that bring you AWS. You'll learn how and why we've built up a roster of services, and you'll get to meet the people behind them. We'll also be talking to AWS users. You'll hear about how they use AWS and what they use it for. Our guest today is Rob Frederick, founder and CEO of Seattle-based Gripwire. Welcome, Rob. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. So you were at Amazon before you, you branched out to do Gripwire. Um, what did you do while you were here at Amazon? So I started at Amazon in 1999, working on mobile commerce and uh, mobile commerce here in the U.S. as well as Europe, and then later in Japan. Um, I also uh, have the dubious honor of being one of the early members of the founding AWS team as well. That's right. I remember you, you really focusing on mobile way back at when we first worked together back yep. in 2002, if my memory serves me right. Yeah, as well. Yep. So what have you been up to since you left Amazon? So uh, the first thing that I did was uh, there were some friends of mine who wanted to do social networking and understand how social networking worked. So uh, taking mobile, uh, my interest in mobile as well as with social networking, we uh, started up a company called uh, uh, Snapvine and that allowed for people to take on uh, text commenting. Uh, so we ended up doing voice com commenting uh, or voice blogging as it's now uh, known and you could dial in from any phone number and leave like a voice uh, message uh, that would appear on any social networking site. That company went uh, viral and uh, in 2008 we ended up, um, that company got acquired and I started Gripwire. So you use AWS in your new company, right? Yes, always. And how has it actually helped you? So uh, AWS actually provides a platform that allows us to move quickly, be very agile, to reduce costs uh, as far as um, hiring people who are focused on the development and the uh, products that we actually sell compared to the people who are going to be or who would be in IT who would have to manage all the various servers and uh, platforms that we have in-house. So it's, it's an amazing sort of platform for innovation as well as uh, agility. Interesting, it's really, I, I find that, that that focus meme actually keeps coming back again and again and again where people say, mm -hmm. this is what we really want to do. Well, don't forget also the cost. I mean, uh, when I was at that previous company, part of the reason why I brought it up was there was a great deal of attention on getting your rack space you know, set up, getting the right boxes, uh, monitoring, hiring people who would be looking at it 24-7. Uh, and uh, when we started Gripwire, or when I started Gripwire, uh, that was just a thing of the past. I just said, hey, let's use AWS, and uh, I haven't really looked back since. Um, Excellent. So I, I think we probably have used almost every service at this point. Um, whether it's uh, EC2, uh, S3, um, Cache, uh, what is it, Mechanical Turk, everything. Would you say that this has given you a competitive edge? Oh yeah, definitely. There's, uh, there are only a few companies that do what we do, specifically in our niche, and uh, those companies are usually large companies, uh, actually quite large companies, and uh, by being small and by offering white labeled solutions for uh, our clients, we're able to then turn around and help them create something that uh, competes with much larger companies too. So we have products that we develop, we have clients that we uh, help in uh, mobile as well as in the social networking space, um, and we both have sort of competitors that we're up against. And, uh, typically with a low cost investment, um, we're able to actually compete uh, head on, if not uh, surpass like the popularity of other sort of uh, companies okay. and products. Now do the customers that, that buy the white label solutions, do they necessarily know that they're running on AWS? Oh yeah, pretty much uh, that's one of the things that we talk about early on and we've had people who are like, no, I want to build my own sort of space and I show them and break down like the cost uh, difference uh, and how fast we would be able to actually get uh, to market. And typically it's uh, maybe a day or two's conversation, just at most someone to, uh, having to think about it. And then finally they're just like, okay, I trust you, let's just go ahead and use this. So right now I can't, I don't know of any 
of my clients over the 2000, since 2008, 2009 that haven't also run on uh, AWS. And these are not just people in the garages. These are Fortune 500 companies as well. Do you have like dashboards and metrics and things you use behind the scenes so you can measure how oh, yeah. well you're doing at oh, yeah. attracting, retaining, growing your customer base? So part of the reason why we started Gripwire in 2008 was around analytics. Um, uh, and one of our products is called Playfield. And in that product offering, it's, a, it's an SDK and we provide the ability for people to do cross-platform uh, communication and experiences. And uh, whether it's iOS, Android, Windows Phone 7, you know, uh, and a few other sort of platforms. Um, one of the things that our clients care about the most is measurement, is understanding exactly which devices people are using, how often people are using those devices and what they're actually doing inside of the applications that we provide for them. So we had to build a, a pretty rich, feature-rich analytics uh, tool set and dashboard that allows our clients to basically get uh, an idea of what people are doing so that they can, again, just like I said before, iterate on the features that people care about the most and sort of, if they choose to, not really pay attention to the ones that people just do not care about at all. So thinking about other companies that might be desiring or considering AWS, what kinds of suggestions or thoughts might you have for them? Uh, considering AWS, um, first of all, uh, think about speed, think of about uh, time to market, think about the opportunities to even do A-B testing at, at a scale that uh, AWS provides. Um, Instead of, uh, just to go back to the previous company, and I hope I'm not uh, gonna make anybody embarrassed here, but um, when we actually launched uh, at Snapvine, I remember we were on a few machines, and it was a pretty sizable investment to get on those machines and get them all uh, racked up and, and sort of wired. And within a month, uh, we had to actually shut down our servers because we had too many people actually using it. It actually brought our systems down and we could not scale because you had to order machines and get it uh, wired appropriately. It was a great problem to have. Um, so we went from zero users, less than 100 really, um, to like several million mm -hmm. in a, a course of like a couple months. So uh, you can imagine a few machines can't handle that Absolutely. load, right? Uh, with AWS and with uh, the various capabilities that are there, even with one of our largest clients now, it's just a matter of, uh, as you know, with Elastic Beanstalk, you can just uh, make a couple of settings or changes, and then all of a sudden, boom, like you're able to support massive amounts of uh, traffic. So we're extremely happy about that. And so if you're a, a company thinking about um, making an investment between either AWS or some other solution, think about scale. Think about what happens if you become successful. Uh, it's a great problem to have, but it can be quite embarrassing if, if you do succeed without a uh, plan in place. That situation you described about having to shut down because of success, I've often characterized that in my talks as a success disaster. Yes, which always gets a, get, gets a good laugh from the audience. And <laughs> right. you, know, you, you dream of this unbelievable success and this exponential curve, and then it happens to you, and you realize the that it can actually be somewhat traumatic as you're trying to you know, work furiously behind the scenes to just keep up. So imagine if you're a big brand and you basically have this thing in place and you have, you know, you're used to data centers, take for instance, um, your own potentially. And then uh, you're an internal PM at, at that company and you're saying, I need to allocate X number of boxes that get approved. Well, what happens if there's an event that blows that allocation completely out of, out of the water and even internally you can't move that quickly to sort of get something sort of turned on. Well, with AWS you have that capability to just go ahead and flip a switch, go into a dashboard and say I need n number of uh, extra boxes and it will work. And uh, again, you don't have to have those people who are, you know, out there wiring, you know, setting up boxes, getting uh, you know, the, what is it, the heating and the cooling uh, set up properly, uh, or even understanding uh, the space uh, requirements, all you have to do is just use your browser 
and uh, you now have that entire team at Amazon working for you. So let's talk a bit more about Gripwire and the, sure. the products that you create. So sure. you, you start out with, you call the environment Playfield? Is yes, basic Playfield. Environment? Yes, Playfield is an SDK and we actually have uh, different components. It, it's made up of, uh, I would say about eight components or nine. Um, we have a cloud-based storage component um, it, for the gaming sort of information like leaderboards, uh, profile information, things like that, uh, achievements. We have um, uh, analytics so that uh, you know when you're actually building your particular game you can get these components uh, just for free out of the box. We have, uh, like I said, uh, profiles uh, for end users. We have invitations, friends. Uh, we have the ability, and this is where we, di we differentiate from a lot of other people. Um, but this is even before Apple was starting to do it, uh, before other sort of companies were doing it. We allow devices to connect to each other, whether it's 3G, um, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi, right? So you, without having to have a centralized server, our devices, our application, our SDK turns your app into a host or, or a client. They're all hosts and they're able to actually interact with each so other. So that's effectively a peer-to-peer? Peer-to-peer -peer peer -to -peer, uh, communications. Um, and uh, we've, we've spent a lot of time in this space doing patent pending uh, sort of uh, capabilities, uh, whether it's on a Windows Phone 7 device or if it's on an Amazon uh, Kindle even. We know how to communicate from any of those platforms to other devices so that we can even do daisy chaining. So you might not have an internet connection, I do. Your device can connect to mine, use my internet connection, and then connect to a third okay. person to do real-time gaming experiences. Um, so AWS is the back end, it's the storage. It's when the devices get that internet connection again, it's checking in to our servers and storing that information uh, uh, via um, you know, S3. Um, or uh, the actual servers that are doing the game hosting or uh, what we call um, matchmaking. Uh, so depending upon where you're standing and depending upon like the, the capabilities of your device as well as the signal strength, we know how to do these really complex algorithms to figure out who should be the host, who shouldn't be the host, whether someone's to the right, left of you, to the right of you, things like that. And um, uh, by having AWS in the back end and, uh, well, actually having AWS in the back end, then we can focus on what we do best, and that is understanding devices and the capabilities of the device. We don't have to worry about, like I said before, all of the infrastructure costs and all of the uh, IT that would be associated with, you know, having to hire people that would just focus on keeping things up and running. So I see you brought some cool devices with you. Do you have something neat to show us? Yes, I do. Uh, let me show you a demo of Phaser. This is our uh, newest game. It's called Phaser Multiplayer. Uh, it runs on iOS, Android, Windows Phone, Kindle Fire, uh, as well as other device types. It actually uses Playfield uh, to uh, connect between devices. So you choose to start the game. That's our handy dandy uh, splash screen here. And uh, I'm going to be the actual host of the game, but uh, there's also a practice sec uh, section as well as a join menu where you can see other people who are actually hosting. So when I hit host, I am immediately dropped into a lobby and uh, my friends and other people who are around will basically join this particular game. So we're just waiting on one more person to join. And it's, now we have four devices, uh, an iPad, two iPhones, and one uh, Android uh, device as well. So I hit start game, and immediately I'm actually dropped into an actual game on a, on a different world. I tilt left, right, up and down to actually navigate as I fly around in a circle here, I should be able to get my opponents in front of me and then attack. Well, <laughs> in this particular case, I lost. Um, it, we have a leaderboard. It shows the scores. And it also uh, 
uh, fires those uh, actions back to our centralized server where I'm able to retain uh, status of my games, people I've played, and you name it, so that I can view it later on. I ended up losing this game, but uh, if I hit the back button, I could take out my revenge on the other people who are playing, and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. All right, well, we're just about out of time, so sure. that will be our, our show for today. Rob, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's been awesome to, to catch up with yeah, you and hear what you're up to. Yeah, good seeing you as well. Uh, as soon as you get something new and, and cool cooked up, please please come back to our, our studio here and we'll Absolutely. chat with you again. So uh, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed hearing from your guests as much as I did. Um, please leave us a comment, send us an email to awsreport at amazon.com. If you're in Seattle and you use AWS and you'd like to be a guest on a future podcast, please get in touch with us. And until next time, this is Jeff Barr, and we'll see you in the cloud.